Hey there! Let's just start immediately with the facts or questions I've gotten a ton of times from the last video. We'll start off with Pichu. Yes, you can hurt yourself when you're invincible, and yes, in stamina mode you can die from self-inflicted damage, but it doesn't seem that you're able to perish from your own final smash. However, in the last video I showed that most cutscene final smashes will keep the opponent at 0.1 HP in stamina mode. And while some characters, like Villager and Isabel, or others, don't exactly follow this rule, you've all informed me that if a third party were to join in, you can kill the opponent during your teammate's final smash. I used a team with no team attack on just for simplicity, but it should work normally so long as the person caught by the final smash gets hit with something. This, of course, isn't the case for final smashes that directly thrust the opponent into a cutscene, since no one else can really move during these times. Speaking of final smashes though, I've got a lot of final smash related facts I've been saving up, so let's go through them all. First off, I'm just going to point out a neat little tip I use frequently, but for some final smashes, if you're off stage and won't be able to recover, use the final smash. The reason being that, if the final smash doesn't move you too much, once you've used it, you'll pop up a little bit, giving you added height to possibly recover. And for another recovery tip, if you're in freefall and someone lands a cutscene final smash, you'll then be removed from your freefall state. Similarly, as stated by Yakuza64, a cutscene final smash will cancel a shield break. This is also the case for Jigglypuff, allowing her to survive if timed properly. Quick tangent, but as Michael Wassilius states, you can die in home run contest with Jigglypuff by getting her shield broken. It doesn't seem to glitch anything, unfortunately, and I tried to do it with Snake, but for some reason I wasn't able to accomplish it in the time limit. Back to Final Smashes, Yusuke Kitagawa asks what happened if you use Incineroar's Final Smash against someone who was just grabbed. In this game, there's a timer after you get grabbed, before you can get grabbed again, to prevent infinite grab combos. And surprisingly, it seems Incineroar's Final Smash does follow this rule. And I think it's cool because this animation and effect is unique, since this won't happen if you use it on Ike when he's, say, invincible. So it's really cool that they kind of thought about this. Itris EXE asks if Shadow's Time Freeze will work on an opponent in a Final Smash like Sheik's. But apparently it doesn't. And when you get a size change, you revert to your original size when you get hit with the Final Smash. And items like the Superstar will not interact with you during the Final Smash. Though when I first read the question, I took the term Frozen literally, and I tried it out with the Freezy. And the Final Smash will break the opponent out of the ice, just like I knew. But for some reason, it seems like there's a chance for the Final Smash to just hit the ice, and not the opponent. Perhaps this is the frozen equivalent of a phantom hit? Final fact for the tangent, but did you know that you can't freeze with any move until a certain knockback requirement is met? You'll probably always succeed with PK freeze unless they're metal, but with a freezy, you need to add on some percent before you can use it. This works oddly with being buried though. You won't be released from the berry until really high percents. But even at the lower percents, once you get released from the berry normally, you'll be frozen. Still on the topic of final smashes, as said by Arjun Nair, Fox and Wolf say some unique things when using their final smashes on each other. Here's what they normally say. Here's what Fox says against Wolf. And here's what Wolf says against both Fox and, I guess, Falco for some reason. And it doesn't seem like anything changes Falco's Final Smash dialogue. And while we're speaking of changes, Matthew Bannister has suggested to me a pretty small but neat visual glitch. Basically, just get a Final Smash, get a Staff, and distance yourself so that you get the strongest Staff hit. It's subtle, but for some reason the Final Smash glow texture will look a bit... different. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison if you can't see it. For another visual glitch involving the Staff, King Ant-Man has suggested something even less subtle. Just position yourself so that Ness or Lucas is in the blast zone, and the person with the staff is far away enough to trigger the strong hit of the move. Then have Ness or Lucas use PSI Magnet, then shoot the staff. For some reason, the beam will just stick around forever until Ness or Lucas move to a certain spot, in which case they'll just absorb the beam somehow. 
And while we're talking about the PSI boys, Kowalski is describing a certain phenomenon with Lucas's PK Starstorm on Spear Pillar. If you go up high enough, you can shoot the PK Starstorm sideways or even upwards. However, this isn't exactly a glitch, I don't think. This works like this on any large stage, like Hyrule Castle 64 or the training room stage. And I had actually known about this before and used it in a combo of mine once, but for some reason I thought it was patched out. At the time, I also thought it was a glitch, but now I don't think that's true. See, for Nessa's peak at Starstorm, it'll always be in the center of the stage, going downwards or slightly to the side. It's stronger and the stars are bigger, but you have less control. But with Lucas, the stars will always spawn above him. They're smaller and weaker, but more stars get summoned and you have more control over them. So it makes sense that if you're really high in the sky, they can be summoned from all around you. So I guess that's a handy tip. Regarding tips, a quick in-game tip that I found that I think a lot of people don't know is that you can cancel Marth's final smash. A lot of people just miss and swing to their deaths, but if you hit the B button again, you could end the attack prematurely and maybe even save your skin. Okay, I'm done with final smashes for the video, but I'm not done with tips. I was reminded by Frenzy Light about a certain fact regarding tips. See, in the game, every character's special attacks are named, as well as their final smash. However, in some of the tips, even their normal moves, like smash attacks or aerials, can be given a name. For example, they call Mario and Luigi's up smashes the Lead Hepa. But then they call Dr. Mario's up smash, get ready for this, Ear, Nose, and Throat. You can see how goofy some of these names are. Like calling Dr. Mario's Nair or Fair, Dr. Kick, and Dr. Punch respectively. And they even call his down air a fitting clear, or even his uh, hospital bed down throw. I could honestly go on and on about some of the goofy names that they have for these characters, or even some of the really cool ones. So if you want me to make a video specifically going over all of these things, let me know down in the comments. Back to some questions, XDXD is asking me to help them find some diamonds. Now I'm not an expert in Minecraft, but I do know a few tips to getting diamonds. First off, you want to start digging down. And it really is that easy. You've just got to start digging downwards. Moving on, Wolf Tamer says that Wario's waft kinda scales with the size. So while being big won't make you go far at all, being small will make you travel quite the distance. And if you're really small... For another neat Wario fact, at Smiling Fish Food has informed me of a pretty neat glitch regarding Wario being inked. It seems that the classic Wario alt doesn't get inked properly like the default Wario alt does. His face will get covered the instant he's touched by ink for some reason. I tested this with metal as well, and it seems the same thing happens here. His face stays covered throughout the whole transition period, rather than smoothly fading in or out. While we're talking about ink, the Turtle King has informed me of a certain visual glitch involving Incineroar in the ink. Well, actually, I'm not sure I should call it a glitch, but it is something worth remembering. If you get inked, the revenge effects on Incineroar's fur will go away until the ink runs out. But the revenge effect is still active while inked, and the same thing is true for when you turn metal. And yes, you can get revenge after you've been inked or turned to metal, but the revenge will not appear on his fur until those effects go away. I suppose this is because a model can only have one of these effects on at once, just like how you can't see an ink effect on a metal opponent, and putting on the metal box will replace the ink. And interestingly enough, the replacement isn't just visual. Inking a metal opponent means that the ink won't stay at all, which means no damage buffs or anything like that. It's just like how Kuklang, and how using it after you've been inked will remove all of the ink. Speaking of Kuklang though, Cam the Man asks if things like Curry or the Franklin Badge will work through Kuklang. And as it appears, any item you have equipped or in your hand before going into Kuklang will still be there during it. While it seems to be useless for things like the Rocket Belt or the Bunny Hood, and the Franklin Badge doesn't work because the invisibility seems to take priority, other things do work. Super Spicy Curry will be active, and you will still get healed from the Healing Sprout. Also, funny enough, the Bob Bomb will still be in your hands while in Kuklang, which makes for a nice little surprise. Still on Kuklang, Hyper Glaceon is asking if Abra can teleport Hero on Kuklang, and as it appears, he cannot. Abra will camp out by your side, but won't actually try to create any portals until your invincibility wears off. Pat and Steed asks what happens if you use Kuklang on a trampoline. Since Pac-Man's trampoline interrupts Wonderwing, I thought this was a cool question. 
and as it appears, Kukling will just fall through the trampoline altogether. What I find interesting though, is that it'll not just damage the trampoline, but also remove it. Normally, you can't really remove the trampoline with a single attack. Not even a crit F smash. So I guess it counts as Hero having landed on the trampoline, but it just doesn't do anything. Continuing, Rary Elder God Nerd informs me that Kukling can block the sudden damage conditions in spirit battles. I was lucky to be able to actually test this out while grinding out spirits, and this is actually quite true. If you manage to get into Kuklang before you get given sudden damage, you'll avoid taking any of that damage. Now speaking of spirits, Green Shell points out how, in the spirit testing room, if you use Kamikaze as hero, you won't actually self-destruct or anything like that. The animation glow will still be there, and the damage will also be dealt, but hero will stay in that pose for a few more seconds before you awkwardly regain control. Oh, and I also learned that you can't seem to whack or thwack a sandbag. Back to spirits, the lurker informs me that Richter's down special is basically just Lucario's aura. So the question asks if aura related spirits affect it. The spirit I used to test this raises aura defense. I made two sets, one with the spirit and one without it. It obviously ended up decreasing the damage Lucario dealt, but as it appears it also decreased the damage of Richter's down special. So yes, Richter's down B has the same properties as Lucario's aura, and the spirits will affect him as such. Though it is worth noting that the mechanic where you increase power will also increase damage is exclusive to Lucario, and not present in Richter's down B. Next up, Bum B asks if you can exceed 999 HP with the help of spirits. So it was simple, I just got a spirit that increases your stamina, then set a match with 999 HP. And as it seems, the spirit will not boost you over 999. Unfortunately, you'll be treated as if you're at 999 HP, just like the opponent. On the topic of stamina again, as stated by the true Splat fan, Cloud technically has two different Palutena's guidances. Normally, Pit is informed of Cloud's finishing touch and how, while it doesn't do damage, it has great knockback. Pit will normally just take the advice, but in stamina mode, he'll specifically say, Not a problem. We're playing stamina mode. While we're talking about Palutena, Syndralix has informed me that Palutena's walk speed scales differently than her run speed. So, to test this, I got several speed increasing spirits, one of which activates only when you eat food, and I paired this with a bunny hood, and... While you can't see them run for long, it does appear that walking makes Palutena go faster than running with all these buffs. I tried it with a few other characters, and it didn't work for them, but if you find anyone else where this is true, let me know down in the comments. Anyhow, that'll be all for today's video. Before you click out, I just want to update you that I'm going to eventually start streaming here pretty soon. I still need to figure some things out, but I'll keep you updated in my community tab. Stay casual.